Sky does Minecraft, a name that is both representative of great success and a curse. A curse of enclosure, fame, and wealth. Any of these aspects difficult for anyone to handle alone, but put together creates a much more difficult situation, as seen through Adam Dalberg's story. A story of an unhappy, emotional 17-year-old finding solace through his connection to the internet, playing games with friends that he met both online and offline, creating videos for the purpose of helping others, all without the motivation for the potential of wealth. But he found what he was not seeking. When he began making videos on an exponentially popular game and saw growth to his channel unprecedented to many other channels exploring different content styles, which eventually led him to make on average 9 videos a day with each video earning well over $1,000. He also took on a production company, various promotions, a family, and finally a toll on his mental health when it all began to collapse starting with his girlfriend cheating, which later partially influenced the liquidation of his company and a massive change in content style. This new content style saw initial success, but slowly, along with his main channel, saw a severe decrease of attention throughout the years. This accompanied by his various emotional breakdowns and a long stream of dramas has placed him in a point of decline and what some might deem instability. Making this the rise and fall of Sky Does Minecraft. Born January 17, 1993, Adam Dalberg was subjected to neglectful parents and cited a specific situation where he remained in his crib for a two-month period where he was given minimal attention, and as a result, the back of his head was flattening. With his father eventually going to jail and his mother suffering from severe mental issues, Adam was put up for adoption and found a new family around the age of one. But this did not save him from a difficult childhood as he at times had outbursts at school where he would barricade himself within the school bathroom. Following this pattern of unfortunate events, when he was just 9 years old, his adopted mother developed an addiction to painkillers, leaving Adam a witness to her strokes, overdoses, and other events influenced by her addiction. Unable to find comfort in his social life due to him being the self-described weird kid of the classroom, lacked a sizable variety of friends, and felt outcasted due to his increasing weight. Though he did find a social belonging on the internet. Being initiated with games like Minesweeper and Space Pinball, Adam delved deep into the crevices of the online world and discovered his new passion. A rising MMORPG known as RuneScape that he played heavily throughout his teenage years, sometimes while smoking. His use of illegal substances and his actions in and outside of school led to a confrontation with his parents. Well, actually less of a confrontation, but rather them enrolling him in a private Christian school. At this time, around the age of 13, as he stated, he went through a deep depression, and often made jokes to elevate his mood. One such joke was how in RuneScape he had a remarkably high agility level, but the more agile he got at RuneScape, the less proactive he was in real life, where he reached his peak weight of around 320 pounds. To counteract his depressive state, he ventured deeper into the internet, where he found the newly established video sharing website known as YouTube. And within the website, he found a small community of RuneScape content creators of which he regularly consumed their content. One such content creator went by the alias of Chisel, a content creator whom Adam admired and cited his comedic skits and editing style as superb. Following RuneScape content creators like these inspired him to make his own channel under the name of Jin the Demon three days after his 15th birthday, where he would upload RuneScape music videos, skits, and general update videos, while encompassing the typical style of content you would expect from a 2008 RuneScape content creator, only he was lacking in viewership. This began changing when around a year later at the age of 16, Adam reached out to Chisel via RuneScape, who by 2009 amassed over 6,000 subscribers, an extremely respectable number by 2009 YouTube standards. Adam initiating a conversation by complimenting his videos, Chisel replying with something along the lines of, Do you have MSN? in reference to MSN Messenger. Later rebranded as Windows Live Messenger was a cross-platform instant messaging client developed by Microsoft. And though Adam did lack the software, he gleefully responded, yes, and immediately set upon installing it. 
where he conversed with Chisel and starred in his very first, somewhat large, YouTube video on May 28, 2009, titled The Calphite Trip Partner Plocks, parentheses, RuneScape. So, you're looking for a Calphite partner, huh? Yeah, I don't want to go solo. Oh, I understand that. Follow me, I got what you're looking for. Do you want to take God Swords there, or what? This small voice acting role opened up a sea of opportunity in the progressively diversifying RuneScape YouTube community, and is seen credited in various RuneScape channels. It should be noted that he'd eventually amass over a year of playtime, or 8,760 hours played on RuneScape. But outside of the online world, the stress of his home life was getting to him, and so he stepped away from YouTube for a six month period to address his depression and weight starting by jogging and later following the exercise routine known as P90X for about a four and a half month period. When he finally returned, he found that most of his RuneScape friends and even some of his real life friends had switched over to a flourishing game known as Minecraft. It should be noted that at the time, Minecraft, in part due to its retro graphics and its rare media presence, was a game that had a somewhat mature player base making young adults quite the appropriate audience for YouTube videos. So Adam, following in the footsteps of his friends, created Sky Does Minecraft on February 7, 2011. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Sky Does Minecraft. Alright, I've been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of people telling me, hey Sky, you should, uh, you should do Minecraft. So, I did, I bought it, and, um, let's play. Were in his first videos lacked polish in terms of video quality, in large part due to how low the frame rates of his recording were. He made up with these shortcomings with his crude humor and open personality. He also sported a RuneScape themed skin, which showcases an agile top, agile bottom, dragon boots, and an amulet of glory. Along with this was a slightly RuneScape themed name, Sky the Kid RS, the RS part representing RuneScape. It was also around this time where with the little money he accumulated with his job from Subway, decided it was time to go semi-independent where he moved out of his parents' house where he was uncomfortable and in with his girlfriend, Dawn. And though his Minecraft channel was faster growing than his RuneScape channel, which had capped at around 12,000 subscribers, decided to focus entirely on Minecraft, leading to the deletion of Jin the Demon, which had around 30 videos on it. Now focused on his Minecraft channel, he developed some long-running jokes like the common reference to gold ingots looking like butter, his hatred of squids, and his friend Ethan, who was quite shy, pretending he was a mute. But even through all these memes and memorabilia, he still lacked decent growth and hadn't quite formed a niche that could discern him from other channels, as he experimented with skits similar to his RuneScape channel, videos with his girlfriend, mod showcases and few collaborations with friends and content creators alike did little to grow his channel. He'd also attempt to reach out to large Minecraft channels, but was ignored. So he began investigating what made these channels grow to begin with. What he found was that mod showcases were becoming popular, but they were done in an educational and dull way. So Sky, with some intuition, decided he would add a comedic twist to his own mod showcases. Come here. Give me your little ice glider. Oh. Yes, you just do. Give me your little ice glider. Um. Oh, come on, you little fuck. How many do I need to feed you, you fat shit? Though this was initially slow to catch on, around July of 2012, his cumulative efforts throughout his collaborations, showcases, and nearly daily uploads resulted in him going from around 30,000 subscribers to 150,000 in the time span of a month where most of his videos received on average 100,000 views, and received not only support from his viewer base, but also a large amount of support from content creators, both large and small, foreshadowing the beginnings of what would later become Team Crafted. Though the information about how this group came to be is a bit foggy, the general consensus of how this group was founded was by Sky Does Minecraft and another Minecraft channel known as Deadlocks for the purpose of collaborations, and slowly, throughout the years, included more and more channels. Most notable is Minecraft Universe, one of many channels that collaborated and received a shoutout from Sky Does Minecraft and would build a solid friendship with him as time progressed. This group helped everyone involved as it channeled additional viewership. 
With this increase of views to Skydas Minecraft and an increase of revenue, a sizable fraction coming from merchandise, sponsorships, and his live streams, Sky found a nice prize, as his intentions with content creation on YouTube were never monetary, as he created videos long before they were monetizable and cited the purpose of his videos were to uplift those who were struggling like he once did. He'd also go beyond helping viewers, as Sky constantly promoted channels much smaller than his, and being close-knit with other content creators, he started to attend conventions with them, such as PAX. At the same time, with his newfound wealth, he would also frequently move into new houses, but this year had a few more treasures. Now that he was picking up a wider audience, any form of Minecraft content he uploaded received around 200,000 views within the first few weeks of their upload. Consequently, his subscribers reflected this change and achieved 500,000 subscribers by November of 2012, this number once again doubling in January of 2013, allowing him to surpass the majority of Minecraft-related channels. Hey guys, Sky here, and I just want to thank each and every one of you for 1 million subscribers. This is a breathtaking number that I never would have thought possible when I first started YouTube. And the only people I have to thank are some friends and you guys. Because without you, this wouldn't be possible. Him now receiving an average of 1 million views per video, with his top performing videos in the tens of millions, meaning that he was invited to events such as Minecon 2013. Of course, with this came success. But with this success came more hidden stresses that wouldn't be expressed until much later. Like when he announced Don and him were no longer together, as behind the scenes they were suffering from the stress of success and what to do with this newfound massive influx of money, along with those approaching them with unclear intentions due to this money. In the end, due to various reasons, some being heated arguments, Sky paid Don $25,000 and a car in exchange for Don to delete her social media so this breakup wouldn't hurt Sky's career. Though, after the dust had settled, they would remain on good terms. As for his fans, he would reveal little information and simply state that the breakup was mutual. But like anything on the internet, if an issue is not addressed or intentions are not clear, many are left to speculate and with speculation comes rumors, some rumors iterated throughout several forums. But this situation was quickly forgotten and his channel, Stalwart in its growth, by August 8, 2013, had hit a milestone of 5 million subscribers. It should be noted that at this time, Sky had one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube. The insanity of his growth exemplified by him growing nearly as much as Machinima, which was the network he was signed to at the time. His scheduling now being jam-packed with streams, video creation, and conventions, where shortly after hitting 5 million subscribers, he would explore Europe and attend events like Oktoberfest. Shortly after these events, he would begin another move, this time to a location in LA where he joined other members of Team Crafted to work on a new project which was the soon-to-be-revealed Team Crafted YouTube channel, but not before Sky's Real Talk video a video clip originally taken from his livestream where he delves into some darker aspects of his past and declares his gratefulness for his viewers and their support, something he has been trying to reciprocate. My entire thing on YouTube was the reason I started Skydas Minecraft in particular was because I had, got, I had just finished going through the worst depression of my entire life and I wanted to help people because when I was, on, when I was going through that, one of the only things that were keeping me through it like keeping me through life was I would actually pop onto YouTube and watch videos when I don't post a video for the day I don't worry about like oh man there's a I just lost fucking money that they know I worry about the fact that maybe maybe someone needed needed a fucking video that day needed something to look at to cheer them up and I wasn't there and cuz I don't want anybody to ever go through the shit that that I went through. I don't want anybody to fight fucking depression alone. I know it may not fucking seem like it, especially the stuff that I post, but the reason I like to be so fucking happy in my videos is because I, I truly believe that if, if you fucking post a video where you're fucking happy, it will, it will rub off. His viewers, per usual, were as supportive as ever, many being surprised that he was adopted and reassuring him that the feeling of support is mutual. 
a good portion of support coming from his closest friends, like those whom recently moved into the Team Crafted household and launched the Team Crafted YouTube channel, officiating a collaborative effort that with the members' combined star power, shared the goal of dominating the platform through not only their individual channels, but also Team Crafted as a singular entity. Though this house was not exclusive to active members and guests were a regular occurrence within the household. Most notable was the best friend of Minecraft Universe, Austin Post, whom a couple years later transitioned to the famous Post Malone, ending 2013 with what seemed to be another productive year. 2014 starting with an ironic situation, when living in close proximity drove many members apart, and the enthusiasm many had to make Team Crafted successful was noticeably fading, leading to Sky while busy in other projects, like being involved in one of Lady Gaga's music videos, announced his departure from Team Crafted on March 6, 2014, stating that he was not kicked, but left from his own free will and still remained on good terms with the members of Team Crafted. Again, due to him not providing a clear reason for his departure, many fans began to speculate as to what was the cause of this separation, some later believing it was due to the possible commercialization of Team Crafted and Sky's opposition to it. There was later a second attempt of this Minecraft team known as Vision Squad, but this vision faded faster than it appeared. Also, out of this separation with Team Crafted, a new relationship was formed when Sky contacted Elisa through Facebook, an old high school classmate that he used to have an interest in. And after she discussed the falling out that she had with her ex and the turmoil between them, Sky offered to fly Elisa out to LA to get away from it all, which she accepted and joined him at a party hosted at the Team Crafted household. But as the party started winding down and few guests remained, Adam and Elisa found it difficult to sleep within their own quarters and decided to stay up and keep each other company all while sharing their life journey and rather emotional conversations. What was supposed to be a short weekend visit turned into about a month's stay because she had lost her ID at the airport and was unable to fly back home and return to her job. Her management, not convinced with her excuses and annoyed at her for her absence, fired her, which is when Skye offered her a temporary stay at the Team Crafted household. But eventually, through the use of a temporary ID, she was able to return home, where her and Adam texted consistently then later began dating seriously, which is when she, although scarcely, appeared throughout Sky's channel, but played a significant role in his newest vlogging channel, Sky Does Things. And though he had expanded to other channels such as Sky vs Gaming, his vlogging channel offered an entirely different form of content that allowed viewers to see him react to his environment outside of games. But just like his other gaming channel, and though he found success in his vlogs, the upload slowed down as he put more effort into consistently uploading two videos a day to his main channel. The reason for the erection of these channels was he was seeking diversification as the popularity of Minecraft was slightly waning, and he wanted to shift towards a variety channel without a static theme. Like, I know lately Minecraft has been kind of not as popular and, and um, not many people are watching it anymore. What would you guys like me to do? Would you guys like me to start doing general gaming on this channel as well? So he polled his viewers asking what they prefer. The majority answering that a mix of Minecraft and variety gaming was preferable. Some viewers taking note that Sky appeared less energetic and more somber than he once did and worried as to what could be potentially troubling him. The answer, though never clear, alludes to a breakup with Elisa. When in a now deleted tweet, Sky events about her cheating. Few news channels aware of this prepared to cover the story, the largest being Drama Alert run by Daniel Keem or Keemstar. But before pushing the story, Sky begged Keemstar not to run it. Keemstar convinced with Sky's forgiveness and general admiration of Elisa agreed to keep quiet about the situation, leading to Sky and Elisa quickly getting back together with many fans unaware of what was going on behind the scenes. What these fans were exposed to was a change in content to a selection of games which pushed his content beyond Minecraft. Though these videos performed similarly to his Minecraft videos, by the end of 2014 he switched back to almost entirely Minecraft content with few update and experimental videos scattered in between. Ending 2014 with 10.7 million subscribers and somewhat static Minecraft related content. Though these videos were Minecraft related, the focus was not entirely set on the game but instead used the game as a vehicle to drive conversation and banter among his frequent collaborators. 
All right. Okay. I believe Never you. Never have I uh, ever been run over. Oh my God! I actually, yeah. I, <laughs> wow. I have, a, I have a, I have a, I have a really good story well, about this. Let me ask if, if someone backed their car over your foot, can it count? Yeah, that sounds like it counts. No, 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 no. Oh, don't, don't give him the, don't, don't give him the point. 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 Collaborators that at most times ran a channel much smaller than his and often helped build the careers of many who approached him. A large aspect of this entertainment was seeing these melding personalities. While most of his content stayed the same, much happened in his personal life as the start of 2015 came with some big changes. When sick or generally unavailable, Sky opted with uploading animations and update videos. His update videos uploaded with no audio besides music, where he used text to convey his messages. As seen in an update video on February 3rd, 2015, Sky announced to his YouTube channel that he had pneumonia and was unavailable to record due to it. But this update had an urgency to it that could not be delayed until he got better. Updates like his engagement to Alessa and that Alessa was two months pregnant. Along with this, an update to some offices that he was setting up in order to shift his brand to something more professional. This new company would be known as Sky Media, a company that brings up other content creators that Sky was looking to build up and sell. A big motivator beyond his own personal wants was a safer way to secure a future for his developing family. Partially due to this, Sky had to take on a more professional and less genuine demeanor. Being that over the last couple of years, Minecraft and its player base and a large portion of his viewer base now consisted mostly of children and teens. This meant that he had to limit certain aspects of his eccentric personality. Vulgarity and curse words were scrapped from his Minecraft videos and instead found a home in his Sky vs Gaming YouTube channel. Sky conflicted by not only his change in openness to his Minecraft content, but also the way the community had been changing as a whole. Being that, as he claims, many new Minecraft content creators were stepping in simply for the money, and often put masks on to secure the revenue rather than truly express their personalities online. But this child-friendly content was a formula that worked. Demonstrated by his company's startup and its recomposing of videos as it saw a large surge of views, reinvigorating his channel well into 2016. But still, his uncertainty of how he wanted to treat his main channel seeped in in the form of update videos. One on July 31st, 2016, stating that he was going back to uncensored content. But uh, the first things first, I'm going to start swearing again in my commentaries and in my, my videos. I don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing. I don't know if it's going to be uh, something that I do forever. But um, I've noticed that it's kind of hard to to really be myself in my recordings because I've always just kind of said whatever's on my mind. I've always just kind of let myself go. And I've noticed that with my commentaries recently that it's been really, really hard to do that because I'm constantly thinking of censoring myself. I'm always constantly thinking of what word I can replace another word with so that it doesn't, so that I don't swear. Um, and I've just noticed that it's really hard to be myself on this channel. A video just 17 days later explaining that due to a fair portion of his viewers being children was aware that he was a form of role model and did not want to normalize the use of curse words. Also citing how the Minecraft community had changed. The Minecraft community four or five years ago wasn't like this before. Like it was never designed to be a specifically age range, age range game. And I guess I've been kind of holding on to that for longer than I, I care to admit. But with that being said, like if you guys want to see a lot of my uncensored content, you can head down in the description, head over to Sky vs. Gaming. That's no holds barred. I, I just do whatever I want because the games are not a specific age range game. So with that being said as well, I, I want to go ahead and, and say that this isn't going to, to censor me creatively. Like I've, I'm, as, as a father now, like I, I'm consciously making this effort to do this nowadays anyway, but for me, YouTube was always just my outlet to, to just kind of go ham and, and do whatever I felt like and just say whatever I felt like and, and you know, I would just do that. But a couple days ago, I went to a, a meet a meetup in Duval, Washington, which is is literally 20 minutes away from my house. When I got there, I just I felt bad because 
there was so many youngsters there. There were so many little kids there who were so excited to see me and were just like, they looked at me like a role model. And after I left the con convention, it just kind of gave me like a, a bitter, a bitter taste in my mouth because don't get me wrong, I love going ham and I love saying, like, I love I love Uncensored Bacon Man, like, which I'll probably put Uncensored Bacon Man in, on uh, Sky vs. Gaming. But, like, I just I just felt bad, you know? And it's it's nobody's fault in particular because they it was definitely not them either. Like, it's not like they went like, why are you swearing? Like, it's not like they said that or anything. It's just, like, me as a father, I... If that was my kid, like, I would be mad. Going back on this decision to not be entirely himself only dug him into a deeper hole of his growing depression. From here, things got much worse. Not only on his main YouTube channel where there was a noticeable drop in views, but also, and most importantly, in his personal life. When he announced to his viewers on September 30th, 2016 that the reason he had been present on his channel was because he was in a mental hospital. It's kind of a tough thing for me to talk about because in doing so I, I kind of am like putting myself out there to heavy criticism on a topic that I'm very self-conscious about and am very anxious about. But uh, I guess the best way to just do it is to just say it, but I've been in a mental hospital for the past week for clinical depression and um, uh, bulimia, which is an eating disorder. It's kind of a tough thing for me uh, to sort of talk about without being like really nervous and anxious like I am right now. I noticed personally, and I noticed that you guys noticed, that the past couple months or so I've looked in my videos very tired, very um, exhausted, and it's because of this. Now I'm not going to go into a huge like, whoa, let me just inform you on what bulimia is and, and everything because I mean you can look that up yourself but it's primarily an eating disorder where for me for example I can't really eat food without getting very anxious and, and panicky and it's it's weird like I can't I can't eat I can't do do it without feeling like really anxious and nauseous and feeling like I need to throw up but I've been hiding this for like the past three years or so. I finally like came clean with my, my parents um, and my my managers and, and the people who work with me and we, uh, we sent me off to a, a hospital for a while to go get help. To add to the list of stressors, some of the people Sky had collaborated with were involved in their own serious scandals, overall giving a bad name to Minecraft content creators. This was something he was disturbed by, but would at times joke about. All right. Can you explain in detail how to be a Minecraft YouTuber and not be a pedophile? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I don't think they have anything to do with each other, honestly. <laughs> you want to explain something? <laughs> don't be a freaking weirdo, yeah? <laughs> he nailed it there. This video, like many others, was recorded at the Sky Media offices where he worked from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, helping create nine videos for multiple channels, working with 14 employees that later would reach a maximum of 23 employees. With all this going on, his sub counts began dropping as opposed to rising. Something he would do to cope with his busy life was make music that would not reach the public. This stress amplified with another breakup with Elisa, that at the start of 2017 announced to his main channel. I know that it's no secret anymore that me and Elisa have separated and you know along with that we have a kid so there's a lot of things happening on the personal end of the spectrum that makes things a little bit difficult and you know makes things a lot harder for me. I just wanted to say like I appreciate the fact that you've all been able to stick around with me during my lows. But their interactions off YouTube were much less cordial. As they were seen frequently going back and forth on Twitter. Sky suggesting that Elisa was guilty of one or more immoral actions that many were unaware of. Later doubling down by alluding to her manipulation, gaslighting, and cheating on him. But he avoided going into detail intentionally in order to keep the potential of her as a partner. Elisa ending the conversation and dismissing his accusations by claiming that Sky was in a manic state. As Sky, four weeks prior to this argument, announced to his viewers he was taking a six-week hiatus where he planned to upload minimally in order to get help for his depression. 
Even with these sour interactions, both online and offline, Sky and Elisa were back together by March of 2017, as she continued his presence on his channel. It's also estimated by around this time, he was offered an eight-figure deal to sell his company and channels, but would be contracted to continue making Minecraft-related content for three or more years. This may have been a deal that he would have accepted if things didn't fall apart. On June 17th, Sky tweeted in reference to Elisa, I wish I never met you, and I wish everyone knew what a horrible person you are behind your mask you fucking enjoy wearing so much. Kicking off a long series of tweets that unearthed the tragedy of his and Elisa's relationship. As all throughout the relationship, even after breaking up the first time due to cheating, Elisa continued to cheat periodically, not just with strangers, but rather an estimated seven mutual friends both on and off YouTube. This was made infinitely worse due to him having a public relationship, as observers made it a talking point and a constant reminder to both parties and what situation they were in, truly one of the more unfavorable aspects of fame. This scandal was detrimental to the life of Sky Does Minecraft, explained when interviewed by Keemstar several days later. It became more than apparent that Sky had no interest in continuing to make Minecraft or other forms of gaming content because of how the community had changed and his family falling apart. Like, I, I would always say fucked up shit. And when the Minecraft community kind of took that turn where it's like this unspoken rule, like everybody, we need to be all kid friendly and, and, and fucking basically be fake pieces of shit, I eventually just kind of got bored of it. Right. I eventually felt creatively, you know... I guess bordered and I, I don't ever want to sit here and, and make content that makes me feel like myself like I'm a fake piece of shit like eventually like and, and it shows in my, my content in my my channel recently you could just see that I don't give a fuck like I just don't care and I feel like for the past couple of years I've just been kind of lost at what I what I want to do and what I need to do and I guess well, like you, you must feel yeah. trapped right because you don't yeah. want to be a child entertainer, but Minecraft YouTubers are seen as child uh, entertainers. Your name yeah. is literally Sky Does Minecraft. I mean, <laughs> you you must feel just just trapped. So I don't want to fuck do Minecraft, Keem. What the fuck? Okay. I don't want to do. I don't want to do Minecraft. How about this? Okay, you don't want to do Minecraft. Fine. All right, but why don't you turn your Minecraft channel, Sky Does Minecraft, into a community channel? and give, you know, smaller channels an opportunity to upload there so they can get exposure. And then, you know, your, your, your channel's not just dead or gone forever. I mean, you spent years building that goddamn thing. You got a fucking diamond. You got a Minecraft fucking <laughs> di or a YouTube diamond, right? Plaque. Yeah. So you can't, <laughs> Minecraft diamond. <laughs> you can't just give that shit away. You know, that's actually... That is actually a really good idea. You know, that would be actually super dope because, like... Like I like, I like the fact that there's been so many people who have been supporting me throughout this entire thing, and if they could have a chance to get their name out there, I should kind of do what like old Machinima did and like give them a percentage of the, the money that the video makes too. Sky, enlightened by this idea, announced his departure from Sky Does Minecraft on July 6, 2017. That being said, my YouTube career is not over. It's not. We're not done. In fact, if anything, the journey is just starting. I've made a new channel uh, where I'm completely unkid friendly. Um, I'm gonna be dropping music on there because music has been my new passion for quite a bit of time now. You guys can head over to the channel in the description, youtube.com slash netnobody, if you guys wanna see what I'm gonna be doing next. I wanna give you guys a chance to shine, which is why I'm deciding that I'm gonna turn this channel into a community-based channel. So basically like, you can submit one of your videos and we'll give you a percentage of whatever the video makes and then we'll just upload it to the channel and then that way you get publicity and you get you know, a, little bit, a little bit of spending money, you feel me? Net Nobody, formerly his vlog channel Sky Does Sings, was used as his hub for music related content. As for his main channel, instead of it becoming a community hub like he planned, it was instead abandoned as he was unable to find a host to manage the would-be uploaded videos and in true charitable fashion, he gave away much of the office assets including some of the YouTube channels Sky Media was developing to his employees. A few days later would come the first of many emotional videos, 
This one in particular is where he defended himself against Elisa's various accusations, going as far as to give his address to demonstrate he doesn't have an arrest record. Just go ahead and uh, look up my, my shit. Go ahead and look up my address, uh, different addresses that I've lived at. Um, if you want to associate any of my, um, my, my name with any of my old addresses, uh, here's the address I'm at now. Come visit me if you want. Six two one. Look that up, see if you can find any kind of arrest records with my name. Um, 2850, my name, and then Elisa's name, see which arrest records you find. Because um, that was the house that me and Elisa stayed at. Uh, <clears throat> so let me just see, uh, t tell me which name you find on the arrest record for that one. Because um, but you might find her. Uh, going on to other things. Um, the, uh, the claims that I don't spend uh, enough time with my son, I agree fully, 100%. I 100% agree. I think that uh, in that area, I'm definitely lacking as a father. I wish I could do more. Um, however, it's hard to see my son if he's in different areas of the state where I don't know where the fuck he is all the time. Um, that's a little difficult to see my son because uh, I can't just go over and take him because that's illegal. Move on with your life, Elisa. I'll move on with my life. Uh, you don't mean shit any, anymore to me. Uh, it was one of those things where, you know, for a good bit there, I was hurt. Uh, I was destroyed. My entire, you know, everything that I felt like I was working for every single day, um, where I would work this nine to five job where you would stay home and just be fucking stoned as balls all day. Um, you know, I felt like I had just wasted my time. I felt like I had just wasted three years of my life struggling, um, basically burning myself out to the point where there was no fire left in me. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and, and even feel the need to play your stupid games anymore. These statements important for many reasons. But the most important for him was to clear his name for the custody battle of his son that he was beginning with Elisa. As his son, since their separation was solely in her custody due to him not having an established parenting plan. Also meaning that there was not established child support. Her twist in this situation to Sky doesn't want to pay child support. Which on multiple occasions he mentioned that he was more than willing and seemed constantly shutting this idea down. A helpful distraction from all of this was his music that was starting a pattern of uploads from bi-weekly to monthly that on average received positive support at around half a million views each. His music based on varying topics, usually relating to his emotions and life. Though there was a new contender, diss tracks. When in August, in a now deleted tweet, Sky tweeted a popular YouTube content creator, KSI, and called him a hypocrite for leaving YouTube due to drama and then returning to do the exact same thing he denounced. KSI responded by saying, Don't be salty now. Maybe if you stopped trying to be a wannabe Post Malone and went back to playing with blocks, you'd be happy again. After a series of back and forth tweets, Sky announced his diss track directed towards KSI, then created and released it within just six days' time. As Sky has stated many times before, his diss track was merely a meme, as to say that though he did have few criticisms of KSI, the majority of the video was a joke in itself and was not serious in nature. Even with this considered, KSI, as he had done many times before with other content creators, reacted to Sky's diss track and began working on his own. Simultaneously, Sky was prepping a second diss track in response to KSI. This made slightly complicated due to a premature form of Sky's diss track being leaked, but this gave him a bit of an edge. As KSI predictably listened to the incomplete diss track, then as reaction reached out to Elisa for information and to play a larger role in his diss track. It should be noted that Sky had publicly asked for a truth with Elisa but was ignored. So just as Sky had anticipated, Elisa left for four days, leaving their son in the custody of Sky for a single day out of the four. To add salt to the wound, his son did not even recognize him when he was introduced after months of being apart. Meanwhile, KSI released his video, containing slanderous information provided by Elisa. Sky uploading his own video just moments after exposing his trap of how his hopes of how Elisa's uncalculated actions and slander may paint her poorly for the custody battle of their son. 
Sky later going into detail on the situation in these emotionally charged interviews from Keemstar the following day. I'm not gonna let this shit continue to fucking happen. Like, I don't know what the fuck her problem is. I don't know why the fuck she hates me so much. I did so much for her. I paid her through beauty school. I just wanted her to succeed in life. Even when she was at her lowest, before she met me, she was like fucking underweight. She was, she didn't know what the fuck she was doing with her life. And all I wanted for her to, was to find her goddamn purpose. Like, uh, I just don't get it. I just, I, I just want my, I want to see my son. I want the rumors to stop. I want the fucking bullshit to stop. And not even in KSI's track. I don't care. That shit was fire, man. Like that was good. Good job. That was dope. You killed it. The bars were crazy. But at the end of the day, man, I'm not upset at you. I'm upset at her for continuing to ruin my life when I haven't done anything to her. I have nothing to lose because the only thing that I want is my son. I gave up my channel. I gave up everything. I gave up my income. I don't care about it anymore. I just want my son. I just want my son. I want to see my son. He didn't recognize me. He didn't fucking recognize me when I visited him. In the end, even with all he did to win the custody battle, the result of it was that he gained custody of his son just six days per month. But where he found difficulty in his personal life, he found success in his newfound online presence. His two new music videos hitting well over 1 million views only a few weeks after their upload. The significance of this was that when any creator, may it be large or small, transitions in content, there's always that worry that their viewer base will not accept their new form. So to be able to achieve interest from old viewers and new viewers alike must have been inspiring to him. It could have been from this newfound inspiration that led him to alter his main channel. First by changing the name to Sky Did Minecraft, then announcing its deletion and an archival video starting January 1st, 2018. But when the date came, instead of deleting his channel, it was simply renamed to Adam and all but his announcement videos were set to private. Fans, both saddened and furious at this decision, reached out to him through Twitter wanting him to change his mind or revert his decision. And it could have been through their constant persistence that the channel was not deleted. And by the end of January, the majority of the videos he had set to private were restored. From here, he kept on making and uploading music videos. The problem was that as the year progressed, video after video, his view counts were dropping drastically to around 200,000 per video in August of 2018 versus the 4.5 million he was receiving last year. Also in August, he uploaded an update video to the Skydose Minecraft channel explaining that he was in a better position now that he had taken steps away from the drama of YouTube and found new friends to support him. I've uploaded like a couple memes for a while, but you know, nothing, nothing substantial, nothing like, hey, let me let, let me back, let, let me let you back into my life type of shit, you know, because I, I kind of just didn't really want to let anyone back in. Like, things have gotten pretty crazy for a while. I had to deal with a lot of false allegations that actually cost me brand deals. I had to deal with um, people that I had once loved attack me. I had to deal with friends turning on me. It was just kind of crazy, you know, and it's, it's just sort of weird what, like, money and, and fame and, and, and all this sort of did to me and, and did to other people around me to the point where I sort of like, I almost like isolated quite a bit and I met a couple new friends along the way whom I live with now, but I just never really felt comfortable enough in my life to let people back in, you know? And for that I want to apologize because I feel like I just left a community, like my, my community in the dust with nowhere to go. I mean, yes, if you like music, you can you could watch my music videos on Net Nobody, but for the most part, for the gaming audience, I, I kind of just left them. He also announced that he was dabbling with gaming content again, and along with promotions of some friends, introduced his girlfriend, who he's been dating for around a year at the time, and also promoted her vlogging channel. Though as the title claims, this was in fact not Sky's last message, as he had done many times prior had gone back on his decisions to abandon the Sky Does Minecraft channel, and instead uploaded a collection of his music and, to viewer surprise, two gameplay videos of Fortnite. With this came another announcement, where he stated that he was getting back into variety content including Minecraft now that he felt that he was in a much less corporate position. 
Reciting how Sky Media, in exchange for financial safety and prosperity, came the price of conformity and depression. The majority of his fans ecstatic at his return to form. Around this time, Sky changed the name of his channel once more, this time permanently to Sky Does Everything. And so began his regular uploads of gaming and vlogging content. That was until March 5th, 2019, when he announced a hiatus to get help for his mental troubles. Viewers on his YouTube channel received a stream of pre-recorded videos, while viewers on his other social media platforms saw a different side of him. I'm safe. I feel like I should reiterate that. I'm safe. I'm just venting. I'm just venting. I always would put up a mask, and I would always hide my mental illnesses because I was so afraid of what people would think of me. <laughs> if they actually knew that I had like multiple personality disorder, <laughs> or if I, if I told them that I was schizophrenic, that I hear voices, that the squid character is, is literally like when, when we would film it, Deadlocks was so nice to me when we would film it because I would just sit here and I would go, uh, shut up, uh, ah, and then afterwards I would dub it in to make myself feel more normal. <laughs> and he was so nice because he would play along with me, but I've always had friends who've carried me. But now I don't have money. And now no one wants to be my friend. And it seems like I've given away all my money. And no one wants to be my friend anymore. I used to have eight million dollars. I gave, gave it all away. All the different people. Different things. I bought six cars, seven cars for people. But you know what's funny? I'm actually happy. I'm like happy that I have nothing. Because I feel like no one can take advantage of me now. No one can pretend to be my friend anymore just for shit. Now I'm finally free. I'm finally free from fake people. I'm finally free from heartbreak. I don't have to fail anymore. These breakdowns, as some call it, were more like infrequent venting sessions that were usually hidden from his mainstream audience. They were also key to gaining a deeper understanding of Adam and an understanding to the treacherous parts of fame and money. As someone taking a shallow glance or perspective might view the fall of Sky to Minecraft as a failure, and focus solely on the fact that his channel went from a consistent 2 million views per video to only around 22,000 to 150,000. But the reality of this is what he explained. While yes, the downfall of Sky is real, but through it, Adam has gained a stronger bond with his core audience and forego the stress of those looking to take advantage of his charitableness. As troubled as he may be, his continuous online career has held many where others would not, and found a group willing to do the same for him, leaving behind a warning to those seeking wealth or fame from online entertainment, and a reminder that superficial, unsatisfactory success is entrapment. A reminder that success is what you make of it, and most importantly, the sky is the limit. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Because just, just because the world doesn't want you to be the way that you are when you feel that you are the way that you are, don't ever feel like you can't do that. The thing that you want to be. That makes you who you are. Or you feel me? No, that. shut up. Listen. <laughs> you can be who you want to be. <laughs> just believe in yourself.